Please listen carefully. Hello, universe. Welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Summers McKay. And I'm Christy Jansen. And we are part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day. In order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day, help us all get focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute where they walk where the home office where the podcast. Today is Thursday, the 12th of May, 2022. Hello, Christy. How are you today? I'm pretty well. I'm pretty well. I'm, I'm, uh, it's Thursday. Yep. Feels like, <laughs> you know, the week has flown by. Yes. They tend to. Yeah. <laughs> Just moving along, moving along here. <laughs> so I had this amazing experience while my family and I were in California where my little girl got to play with some family friends of ours who have an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 6-year-old. And Brennan played with them for hours and they were so tender and so sweet and loved playing with her and the oldest the 11 year old has been to our house in texas and so she knows him and and considers ash to be one of her favorite people on earth and it was almost like his little sisters got competitive because they wanted brennan to love them as much as she loves ash it was just this precious community (sighs) sort of moment of parenting and it really made me feel so tender and kind of sad because we didn't have that for so many years because raising her in the in the early Aww. pandemic that was not something that we did. Yeah. There is something to be said for you know, I mean it does take a village and and having a lot of similar age kids together. Yeah. I mean it's different cuz your other kids are all teenagers so they are not they can't relate to a little a little kid yeah. quite the same way. Exactly. There's just enough distance where watching these children, you know, they would be perfectly happy to play magnet tiles with her for 12 minutes and then run and jump on the trampoline for four minutes and then back to magnet tiles. And that transition and running around and moving constantly that little kids can do together. I think, you know, my daughter, we spent five days away from school and you know, when I dropped her off at school, she just like walked right in and didn't even look over her shoulder. So I think she was very happy to be back around her friends. But I'm so deeply grateful for the the tribe that we have and the friendships that we have. Mm -hmm. But I I really do wish we could, you know, a little nostalgic, a little sad. I I wish we could all be together more often. Also, I didn't mention this yesterday when we were on the pod together, but uh, it's nice to see you here in California, even for those few minutes, just in my office. Exactly. Even for just a few minutes. Well, next time I come, we're planning ahead and making sure that it's more than just a few minutes. <laughs> Great. I like it. I like it. But there's, you know, there's a lot going on in the world today, a lot going on professionally. You've had a lot of stuff happening with potentially relocating the office, the home base office. Mm-hmm. Any update on potential relocation? I think we've identified where we would like to go. I'm not sure if the deal has been inked yet. Okay. Just stay tuned. We'll probably be moving in the next month or so. And that'll be a nice a nice upheaval <laughs> to shake out all the cobwebs. <laughs> what I can say is all of a sudden moving does sort of clarify things a little bit. It does. It does. Well, okay. So we debated who got this story today. <laughs> There are lots of good stories on The Optimist Daily, but you picked it first. You got into the doc first, picked the article first, but I'm pretty excited about your story. Okay. Well, let's talk about it first then because uh, okay. speaking yeah. of moving and starting new things, yes, the headline reads, Stanford's first new school in decades is dedicated to the climate crisis. And I think both of us are excited about this because it's an important recognition yeah. that the climate crisis and the mitigations towards the climate crisis is something that deserves cross-disciplinary attention. And so for the first time in 70 years, Stanford University is opening a new school. And what that means is that there's going to be a set of 
professors and students and courses of study that will be focused on a bigger topic. It's not siloed necessarily, like we like to say, but this is a new school and it's going to be called the Stanford Door School of Sustainability, dedicated solely to studying the climate crisis. Mm-hmm. It is made possible mm-hmm. by a generous donation of $1.69 billion with $1.1 billion of those funds gifted from John and Ann Doerr. And it's the largest gift received in the university's history, the largest ever for the formation of a new school, and the second largest gift to an academic institution yet. It's a tremendous offering. And there's eight topics related to the climate crisis, including climate change, earth science, energy technology, urban sustainability, nature, food and water security, human society and behavior, yeah. and public and environmental health. And Summers, when I read those, I was like, no wonder we're so into this because basically that's what we talk about in the Optimist Daily. It's literally our categories. <laughs> literally our categories. I mean, I want to go there or teach there or something because this is exactly what I feel like is the most important thing for us all to be thinking about most of the time. And all of those different yeah. categories are different components of it. And they're all interlinked and interdependent yeah. with each other. I love this story for a couple of reasons. I'm a big fan of education. I'm a big fan of using education to effect change. I also love that this family foundation, John and Ann Doerr, and for those of you who don't know, John Doerr was a major American investor and venture capitalist at a top tech investment company called Kleiner Perkins and made billions through investing in the internet and technology as it has exploded. I love that these investors are investing not just in philanthropic sort of, that they're applying donations with an investment mindset. They're applying the idea of philanthropy with building long-term chains of sustainability with understanding that just Mm -hmm. giving isn't enough. Giving with education, with structure is so, so meaningful. So I love the size of this donation, but I also love the measured intention of the donation. And even though Stanford is my college's arch nemesis, I think this is just absolutely amazing. I want to go to this school. I want to go get a second master's from this school. I want you and I to go here and learn there. I just, I'm delighted by this story. (laughs) And hopefully it just, it's the beginning of an opening of a new complexity science that Stanford will be the spearhead in, but won't actually be the only institution that does it. Because Stanford's a pretty exclusive school. But John Doerr, he's quoted in the New York Times as talking about climate and sustainability is going to be the new computer science and acknowledging that this is what young people want to work on with their lives for all of the right reasons. Absolutely. We've written about that on The Optimist Daily also, that climate and sustainability and this type of thinking is where the energy is going in terms of young people and solutions and innovation. Yes. Remember in The Graduate when they said, plastics, Benjamin, plastics, that's what you should get into? Well, you know, sustainability, circularity, that's what you should get into. Exactly. Um, (laughs) And, you know, even in, in the work that we do at The Optimist Daily and the partner organizations that we work with and just how Christy and I lead our own lives is all about going long on sustainability, right? And really being Mm -hmm. bullish on sustainability as a business opportunity, but the right business opportunity, not only for growth in financial benefit, but also for keeping this world alive. You know, investing in in our society in a a long term. Exactly. uh, Getting out of short term thinking. I am investor crushing on John and Andor on this one. And then I am curriculum crushing on the actual like classes. This is an amazing story. What's your headline? We've been doing a lot of these stories on the Optimist Daily is kind of diving into like hobbies that people have and really understanding what hobbies do to improve health. This headline reads, what are the health benefits of backgammon? Now, 
Board games have a whole range of health benefits that are often overlooked, and the classic board game Backgammon is a treasure trove that offers a lot more than just entertainment. Really quickly running through the list, it improves memory and cognition, which is great because playing board games, the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus are given a workout. That is how you keep those regions active and strategic tactical aspects of backgammon help with memory. It reduces the risk of mental disease. Due to that previous mental workout, your risk of cognitive diseases such as dementia and Alzheimer's are decreased. It boosts endorphin levels. And this is funny, Christy, because I read this and it made me think of Wordle. I think Wordle boosts your endorphin levels and boosts my cortisol levels. (laughs) Because if you play backgammon, there's a move. When a person pulls ahead or three consecutive double sixes or rolls, you can't help but smile and laugh no matter what side you're playing for. That's going to increase our feelings of happiness and endorphins. Sharing laughter can also promote compassion, empathy, and trust in others. Obviously, you can't play it alone, so it reduces the sense of isolation and some of the depression that can fall around that. It can also increase your confidence because a structural social environment, they bring you a sense of faith in your abilities and the decisions making skills you get. Again, I think that one's kind of like Wordle. It increases Christie's confidence and drives me <laughs> crazy. But I also loved this one. It boosts childhood development. Absolutely. And I think we were talking about before we, we got into the pod record today, we were talking about... You know, I used to play backgammon when I was a kid. And partly it was because we didn't have social media yeah. or other things. And I spent a lot of time like on a boat where I didn't even have television. What we do, we'd play cards, we play backgammon. And yeah, backgammon's kind of good on a boat because it has little, you know, the, the backgammon board usually has the sides. So the chips don't fly all over the place. Whereas like a chess board, things can fly pretty easily if you're rocking around. Right, so they're not going to slip off and yeah. I really loved backgammon. And it is, it's, it teaches math, it teaches strategy, probability concepts. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's fun. And one of the things that we haven't talked about on the podcast, but we've been talking about a lot is that adolescent mental health is really um, suffering lately. And I read an article in the newsletter, the New York Times newsletter, I think it was yesterday or Tuesday, focused on adolescent mental health. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it has declined significantly since 2009, which is, guess what? That's when everybody had a smartphone. Right. So getting your family together and playing on a board together and being close together. (laughs) Or as opposed to social media or checking your emails or whatever else we do with our phones. Yeah, let's play a game. Exactly. Let's play a game. (laughs) And if backgammon is just one of the tools in your artillery, because we also have a headline that reads six ways to practice mindfulness with your kids, sore muscles, here's how to help them recover faster. Spending time in greenery reduces the risk of dementia. So here's what you do. Go out to the park where there's lots of trees with your backgammon Mm -hmm. board and your kids, you'll have mindfulness, you'll have connectedness, and you'll reduce your dementia risk. Exactly. And then you can stretch afterward. Right. (laughs) What else do we have today, Christy? (laughs) Well, there's also a headline about a robot that's smaller than human hairs and a new biomarker that may help make sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS a thing of the past. That and so much more on The Optimist Daily. Thanks everybody for listening and for being here with us on The Optimist Daily. Update, we promise to continue to share positive solution-based stories with ideas on how you can get active, you can participate, you can get your backgammon strategy on and (laughs) help change the world (laughs) for the good. You can join the Stanford School of Sustainability also. And um, yeah, you know what? You can also consider becoming an emissary supporting The Optimist Daily and for just $5 a month support readers supported, funded, independent journalism and share us on your socials, tell a friend about us and if you like the pod, leave us a review somewhere we can see it. We'll wave back. Thanks, everybody. We will be back tomorrow with more solutions.